gentlemen. All right, good afternoon. Um, first scrimmage, which uh, as a coach is always good and bad. The good thing is, is get a chance to get live work in a game situation with, with officials. Bad thing is, it's a wake-up call that uh, you got a lot of work to do, and uh, most of it's to be expected, honestly. I um, thought just to kind of give you an overview, the first defense uh, won soundly versus the first offense. Um, and the second offense won soundly versus our second defense, really. Um, the first, uh, going back to Friday yesterday, uh, really probably our worst practice um, probably since we've been here defensively. Um, offensively, went up and down the field, um, wasn't, wasn't much resistance, did not play very well. So, as happens in camp a lot, defense bounced back. They were ready to go today. The one defense, that is, bounced back today. Offense did not answer the bell. Offense lost soundly. And uh, really, if you look at it, um, you know, the sloppiness really attributed to, to penalties. Uh, a lot of those procedure penalties, which are, are mental errors. We really struggled to run the ball. We had multiple drops. Um, and we just, we just didn't throw it very well, and we didn't protect it very well, and didn't run it very well. And so, all you all are pretty, pretty intelligent, so you all can figure that out. Um, and then – the second offense, I thought, did some nice things. Uh, did some nice things defensively. Uh, a lot of freshmen, freshmen playing with that second unit, and we've got a ways to go um, there. Some positives, I'll give you some positives. I will say this, uh, and I'm sure I'll, I'll kind of cut it off before I get asked about it. Um, Josh uh, Grodin, he, he, he practiced today. Um, we got him some, he has to be in helmets for the first two, day, two days due to the acclimatization. Uh, but he did, he was out there today, he punted. Um, and, and we welcome him to the team. He's a good addition. Um, he's got talent, uh, fits a need, um, something we've been working on. It's kind of why I dodged the question earlier in the week. So i uh, excited about having him. Uh, some positives, I'll start defensively. I thought Taj Austin had, had a really good day, um, and he had his worst day probably as a Mountaineer yesterday, so that was encouraging. He bounced back. Um, he had four sacks. Uh, Darius Stills was really disruptive. Thought he won the battle versus Chase Barrett decisively today. Uh, Ruben Jones uh, made some plays with the first and second unit. And then Tay Mayo had a pick and ran it back. And I like how he's competed the last couple of days. Um, offensively, I think the positive, Sam James continues to make plays down the field. Uh, excited about him and his potential. Sean Ryan and George Campbell both made some uh, downfield plays on go balls, which is something that we needed um, and the reason we added those guys. Um, and then uh, T.J. Simmons was 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 pretty consistent. Sinkfield uh, played the best of all our backs. And then Trey Lowe. Trey Lowe had a really good day. We uh, um, he he played a couple scoring drives and and really played well. So um, that's where we're at. I'll say this is we've got a lot of work to do. The good news is we've got plenty of time to get there. Um, what this football team's got to correct, and I talked about it a little bit last time. I was. I was up with you all. What we've got to correct is our bad has got to be way better, okay? If you look at really quality football teams, when they don't play very well, they're still good enough to be in games and have a chance to win, all right? Right now with us, where we're at is our bad is really bad, all right? I mean, it's really bad. And so now when we're good, we, we look like a, a quality football team. But we've got to make it where our bad – is we're just still average, okay? That's what that's what we've got to get to, and we're not there yet because defensively we were bad yesterday, and it was it was a it was a race race up and down the sidelines today. Offense was really bad, struggled to move the ball in any phase. So not not uh, not discouraged, disappointed in some guys' performance, but it's always good to get it on tape, correct it, and and get back at it. So we'll do that tomorrow. So with that, I'll take questions. Neil, you've been first-year head coach, OC. Any correlation to disappointment, impressive at this point in camp compared to where you were in your other stops? 
Um, this is this this is a little bit unique, just because what what we lost, um, or what I say it wasn't we at the time, but what West Virginia lost off last year's team, um, especially offensively, makes this totally unique. Um, you know, the, if, if you go back and kind of go through it at Texas Tech, really had some playmakers back. Quarterback that had played was back. Uh, actually, two quarterbacks that had played were back. Um, so we had we had some pieces to work with. Go to Kentucky is completely starting new. Okay, played just a lot of freshmen. Really struggled um, in the first year as we played those freshmen. Um, and then at Troy it was just a program that wasn't in a good position, and we knew year one was going to be uh, kind of a growing phase. This is unique in the fact is because we're replacing so many off a of, off a, a really good offense, and so. That's the different part, okay? And we got so many new faces. If you think about, especially on offense, how much our rosters changed going back to December, it's really incredible. So, um, different, you know, different. I do think we have some pieces. Um, those pieces got to be more consistent. Um, and that's our job as coaches to get that done. Health-wise, were you missing a lot of pieces today? Or you nah, you know, we got some people banged up in the, in the scrimmage, Alex, but we went into it relatively healthy. We uh, – um, Going into it, I think one one guy was was out for or two guys were out for the scrimmage, um, but we came out of it. We had some bumps and bruises. I'm not I'm not sure if anybody was significantly injured, um, but we were pretty healthy, especially uh, seven days in. Neil, you mentioned Trey Lowe. How did the other quarterbacks look today? You know, I, I didn't think that I didn't think as a group the quarterbacks performed very well. Um, I'm hesitant to be critical till I watch it. It's really a hard assessment until you watch the video, until you got a better angle so you can see kind of what they're seeing. Um, but not not as productive as it needed to be. Um, uh, Trey Lowe was – he did some good things. Uh, we let him run the ball, and, and, and he did some nice things in, in the running game and then hit a long touchdown as well. What does Quandarius Qualls give you as a pass rusher in that band spot? He's got the best ball get-off. He's ball, his ball get-off is the best we have. He's the best natural pass rusher we have. Um, on our football team, uh, he's got some experience. So that's key. Can I say that's probably his best attributes? I know you're not a person outside the building, really. But do you think people outside here maybe discounting the chance Trey has to, to make an impact this season? You know, I, I don't know. Um, I try to. Once we get rolling here, I really don't have a whole like a whole lot of feel kind of what's going on outside of here. Um, he does some nice things. I think he's got a chance to chance to help us. We've got a – he continues to get better. He's a redshirt freshman. You know, he got to – you know, he played a little bit in the bowl game, but he's a redshirt freshman. And um, he's a little bit on a roller coaster right now. He's up and down. Um, but today, um, you know, we, we let him – he played more continuous snaps, and I thought, I thought he showed some real positive signs. Coach, the, the bad that I guess you're bringing up, is it fundamentals? Is it, you know, just the lack of – and how correct it will be. Uh, you know, I, I think you get better. I think that I'm, I'm not sure you're going to see a whole lot of coaches that are real pleased with their football teams probably a weekend. There's so much timing, especially on offense. It takes a while. You know, what happens is, and sometimes it's good, that's what I, and I told this to our team, is, you know, I'm not necessarily upset that, that we had some struggles on offense just because we got some guys think they're better than they actually are. And they think that sometimes they don't need to take coaching. So it's good to say, hey, you know, actually, if you did what you're supposed to do right here, this is the play that's supposed to be made. So, you know, sometimes the video, you know, because I tell them all the time, usually there's a video screen here, not this backdrop. And I say, hey, your video will tell your story. So don't tell me who you think you are. Let's watch the video and let's see who you are. All right, because it really doesn't matter what you say and what you think. You know, it's what's on this video screen. And so on this video screen, some of these guys that, think they're ballers, and that would be their term, okay, not mine, but in their term. So we turn it on, and all of a sudden they don't do exactly what they're supposed to do. So maybe maybe we actually know what we're talking about sometimes. You know, how did you hook up with the uh, money from LSU? Um, just some – through his connections, really. Um, the uh, – a couple of our coaches on staff have connections to, to the pro kick outfit in, in Australia, and – I think Josh kind of, and I, we'll let we'll let him tell it at some point. But um, I think he was probably a little premature in giving it up, and had a year of eligibility, wanted to play. We definitely had a need, 
and um, some guys we had relationships he had relationships with. So um, that's how it worked out. With the couple guys that made position switches this week, thing with Bonamico and Smith, kind of swapping just thoughts on those guys. Yeah, you know, I think that, um, and I'm the one that moved Bonamico, so I feel bad about it because we worked him there in the summer and worked him early in camp. But he, he's just a more natural player, closer to the line of scrimmage at that spear spot. So he's going to be – he'll, he'll have a better impact for us defensively at that spot. Um, off, or, and uh, Ty Key, Ty Key's a guy that's going to play. We're going to get him ready to play. And, and we like depth at that safety position. He's physical and he can run. And um, I just thought it was a good move for him to get back there where he can get a lot of reps. Your number one defense, what did the back end look like? So, yeah, we rotated a bunch. We got Mahone, Norwood, um, and then uh, Ty Key got in there. Uh, Jake Long played a little bit with that, with that bunch. And then at corner, we played uh, Bailey, Washington, and we're playing Fortune and Mayo. All those guys are getting reps um, with the ones as well. How are those young corners coming along? They're getting better. Yeah, I do. I like their makeup. Yeah, they like their makeup. It's a challenging position to play early, especially with the, with the dudes we're playing in our league. Um, Mayo, really competitive. A um, little light right now, but really competitive. Uh, Fortune is the exact build that we want, and he can run. Um, you know, they're getting challenged because we got some length. You know, so there are some guys that made plays today, um, but just because they're long, went over top of them, get them. So technique-wise, Coach Adai's doing a nice job with them. They've got a little work to do. But I, I do like their makeup, and I think that I think that they're going to be a factor for us this fall. To Corey Turner is a kid, too, that, that long-term is going to be a really good player. He's a little bit behind them right now, but he can run, and he's got, he's got good, uh, good skills. With Miller being on the bike a few days ago, is he back to – He's going to be back. He he didn't practice today. He was the he was the one. Um, he didn't practice today, but it's it's nothing serious. Do you do you have a time frame for deciding uh, how to handle the Haskins situation? Um, really, to be honest with you, Alex, I'll probably let um, my statement kind of that I released the other day kind of kind of let that be the speaking point right now as we continue. We're we're handling it in house right now and. Um, as we get further along, we'll let y'all know. Do you have a date that you'd like to get some closure on Ryan's availability, Sean? Yeah, yeah, I would. Yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I don't make that call, though, so pa patiently waiting. You mentioned Sam James as maybe one of the receivers that had, a, had an okay date. Could you maybe get more specific? What you yeah, it, it, you know, he's a guy that, that's going to have to be – he's got to be a player for us, you know, and I talked, I've talked about this um, – before, he's a redshirt freshman, but he's not allowed to play like a redshirt freshman, okay? Um, where we're at is he needs to be a guy for us. He needs to be a guy that we can count on. Um, you know, he he has really good speed. He's got great ball skills. He's explosive. Um, and so and he's worked really hard. And um, probably coach him as hard as anybody. He's a guy that doesn't – he's not allowed to have bad days. You know, and, and my challenge to him is he's got to compete at a high level every day if he wants to be the guy that I think he can be. And I think he can be, you know, here at West Virginia, there's been a history over, if you look over the last 10, 15 years of high level receivers, and he may be the next one of those guys. And so, but it has to happen every day. Um, but I, I, am, I am pleased with where he's at, um, but we'll continue to push him to reach what I think is a really high ceiling. Receivers—that's that, a tough assignment. I mean, whether it's he, Bryce Wheaton, I mean, you look at West Virginia history. There's not a lot of true freshmen that have done that. Is that, is that yeah. Well, they're red shirt. They're red shirt, so they're a little bit older. Um, but it is. I mean, it's it's not it's not your perfect situation. Um, but hey, that's what that's where we're at. You know, until we added George, we didn't have a senior receiver. You know, most of the guys are going to line up and play. Haven't played much time at it. At receiver in, at Division One college and Division One at the Division One level, uh, T.J. Simmons the only experience we have, and uh, so that's why it's so imperative in these scrimmage situations that we play well at wide out. Um, I thought we were okay today. I will say this: we were okay, which was a lot better than we were at any point during the spring in any scrimmages. Okay, um, so we're we're making steady improvement. Um, I think that's the position group that'll benefit the most by going back and watching this video um, and then making some corrections. Is there any area where you're exceptional yet? 
or above good? Um, I think it's too early to say that. I think it's too early, John. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say exceptional at any position. Um, I do think that we've had real steady play out of Colton McKivitz. I think we've had real steady play out of Josh Chandler. Um, Josh Norwood's learning what to do, but I love what he brings every day. Um, I th I'll tell you this, our long snapper, Rex, I'll probably jinx him, but he's been on money, so he's been right on point. <laughs> the, uh, you know, a couple of those wide outs, TJ Simmons, Sam James, they've been, they've been consistent. Um, defensively, I think, um, you know, Tom Curry, after the first couple of days, has, has been much improved. Um, Brees Donahue's been pretty solid. So those, those would be some of the guys that, when I think about, they're consistent. I know exactly what to get. I'm going to get out of those guys every single day. And that's, to be honest, that's what I'm hunting. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you all. Y'all have a good weekend.